McGonagall, Bazoria County Master Gardener. Tonight, my husband Dick and I will introduce you to our version of Life with Plumerias. We are not experts, but have enjoyed Plumeria in our garden for years. They may be amongst the least challenging <laughs> of our favorite garden beauties. <laughs> and uh, I'm Dick. Um, as my boss of 27 years has just described to you, they are a lot of fun. They're very tolerant. I got my first plumeria <clears throat> over 40 years ago when I was a baby lawyer at a West University garage sale. It was probably five foot tall. I had it for 10 years in a pot. And I figured out it, I must have overwatered it or the pot wasn't draining or something because the shaft of it started getting soft. I was worried. I cut it all off as to the soft part, put it back in the ground. And uh, 25, 30 years later, the remains of it is doing fine. It's about six, seven feet tall and still making those beautiful carmine and purple with yellow centered blooms. Um, when we travel, we, uh, for instance, Hawaii has Cocoa Crater, which is a volcano that in the belly of it has a forest of plumeria trees. It's an amazing place to be. Uh, the South Texas Botanical Gardens in Corpus Christi is a wonderful day trip. Lots of fun on the way to and from, but uh, they have a, a very renowned uh, locally famous plumeria forest. We uh, are members of the Plumeria Society of America based in Texas. Uh, we meet at the zoo. Uh, it's a fun group. We have a luau every year and and uh, they have sales and shows and and uh, very informative meetings. I'd encourage you to consider it. But uh, I hope you enjoy our presentation tonight and um, and uh, a, a lifetime of joy with Plumerias. Plumeria only grew in Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. The name Plumeria was named after a French monk named Charles Plumier, who found the species in the Caribbean but he was not the first. A Spanish priest named Francisco de Mendoza discovered the Plumeria in 1522. Plumeria were carried to Hawaii in 1860 by a German biologist named Dr. William Hillebrand. As Lisa just described, Plumeria are not native to Hawaii, even though we think of it because when we were young, if for those older of us, um, we'd see somebody get off a trans world airline plane or Pan American plane and be presented with uh, a lay of Hawaiian flowers, the plumeria. Uh, the plumeria has often been known, also known as the frangy panty. Many years I called it the frangy panji. I'll bet you others have too. But uh, the International Clearinghouse for Plumeria science, information, uh, species. It, it's uh, called the Plumeria Society of America, and it's based in Texas. Uh, our local club meets in Herman Park at the Sherry Flores Pavilion. Dues are $35. We meet seven times a year. They have luau's, shows, and all kinds of things. It's a fun group. But the, plum the Plumeria does... Uh, have uses. It's used in making perfumes and I'm sure some other things, but no part of that flower or plant is uh, edible. Uh, the white sap that comes from it, it's it's milky and it's a skin irritant. The uh, the Mexican frangy panty with its white edged yellow flowers, that's the bloom traditionally used in that Hawaiian lei I was discussing about. The frangy panty belongs to the Apocyniae family, it's the dogbane. The genus Plumeria has dozens of species, the most common of which we Houston gardeners will ever see is the Plumeria rubra. So pictures you see today, things you buy in the store, the ones you trade with your friends will be most likely the Plumeria rubra. Two explanations why the Plumeria was named Frangy Panty. The name Frangi Pani was named after a Italian nobleman named Marquis Frangi Pani. He created perfume from the flowers in the 16th century. Frangi Pani came from the French 
rangy lamier is a type of coagulated milk that looks like pomerian milk when the tree's limbs or leaves are cut when it oozes. Caring for your plumeria. Plant your plumerias in a soil that is uh, very loose, light, a mix of potting soil, perlite, uh, well draining. Uh, we add cypress bark mulch, cypress bark mulch, and sphagnum moss to that mix. At the bottom of the pot, rather than rocks, we usually use the cypress bark mulch again. And at the top of the pot, we'll put a mulch of cypress bark mulch. Um, give them a good soaking of water, but let them dry out. In some ways, they're a little like a cactus in that they uh, are very drought tolerant. Uh, they also can handle a good amount of water as long as it drains well. You would want to fertilize your your plumeria with a high phosphorus number. In other words, the number in the middle would be the big one. 10, 35, 3, or 5, 35. That's to encourage blooms. It's not that they, they don't like the other fertilizers, but you might all set them off making more leaves and, and, and growth instead of the blooms. The plumeria do love sun. They need at least six to eight hours to bloom. Next, we will show you how to plant a plumeria in a pot. The thing to know is to make sure that your pot has enough drain holes in it. It will allow water to flow through so you will not have root rot. Next, we will take cypress bark mulch and put it on the bottom of your pot. And this will prevent losing too much soil when you do water in your pot. Next, we will take the soil that we mixed before, pull it in. Part. Touch. And we'll take a cutting. Take a cutting. This one is, is a from a 35 year old plumeria that they bought years ago. We'll place cutting in your pot. Hold it. And you will take your soil around cutting. Pull up a little bit on it. Okay. And you keep adding soil. And you get near the top of your pot. Damp a little. You might ask how far do you have to plant them down? The fact is, you could put two yards down and they'll grow. Or you could put six inches down in the ground and they'll grow. Uh, they just seem to grow. Uh, probably the only thing that you could do to hurt the plant is to overwater it. They're a little like a cactus. Um, um, they'll start getting a soft trunk. And that you know, you probably did what I almost did to my 35 plus year old Thing. I killed about a third of it, not knowing what to do. It got very soft and spongy. It was dying. I cut it to where there was still some solid. And uh, that was 25 plus years ago. And I've been cutting tippets off it ever since. So Lisa, what do we do to dress them up? We usually take cypress bark mulch, roll around.
Like when you plant trees, you keep it away from the trunk. This will hold a little moisture in to help out during the summer. And how do they handle summer heat? Do they like sun? Yes, six plus hours. Caring for your plumerias in the wintertime. You want to stop fertilizing your plumerias in the fall. They will bloom very often well into the mid-November. Uh, they each plant, you know, blooms different lengths of time and stuff and whatnot. But very often you'll have a lot of blooms in November. But stop fertilizing then because they don't take freezing in the winter. Just before I, the first freeze comes, we'll pull them out of the ground or move the pots into the garage. The, when you pull them out of the ground, if they're planted in the ground, what you do is you can shake the dirt off them or not, preferably shake the dirt off them. You can store them vertical or sideways like cordwood. You can uh, uh, have no light whatsoever for two, three months. And, uh, uh, but before you do store them, it might be a, an appropriate time to cut the tips off of some of your plants that have grown too big or out of shape and those tips can be saved. Those tips are useful for next year's uh, new plantings or trading with your friends, or as the South Texas Botanical Garden does, they sell them. They sell them to finance their operations. The If you bring them indoors in a sunny place, they're gonna need very little water. In the dark, they need no water. Before you, your winterization, you know, what you want to do is cut all the leaves off also. Take the scissors and just snip all the leaves off. The ones in the dark in the garage, you wouldn't give any water. There'd be no water all winter long. Always remember to take a magic marker and at the base of any cuttings that you make, mark the name of the plant if you have it so that you can identify it later. When the spring comes, you pull them out of the garage. Usually it's going to be March. You'll put the pots back outside. You'll take the uh, grocery bags full of cuttings uh, and sort them out and plant them or give them away. Uh, the University of Florida uh, points out that the bark or they don't have bark but the stems the, the plant itself outside of the leaves uh carry on a photosynthesis so even when leaves are not present um it still is in operation it's much like a succulent starring plumeria for the winter the first picture we stored one of our plumeria in the pot in our breakfast room and the second picture in the middle we have a sunroom where we stored more plumeria in that room and the third picture we pulled plumeria out of the ground or large pot that we uh is too heavy to move and we place those uh plumeria in the garage Thanks to our friend having such success, having his plumerias for years and years planted in ground and getting them through the freeze sort of two years ago, we've tried it. And I would point out, this is some of his dead wood that he deposited in my front yard. And it was only a small piece of his big tree. And this is the part where it got cut right here. So when we heard we're going to have 18 degree weather, what we did is something that we do to our hibiscus bushes. We'll fill a bucket. We'll fill a bucket with leaves. You might pretend that this is about six inches shorter. We just put the leaves in a bucket right there. We rake the leaves up against it. 
and north winds being what they are, that's north, and that got, gets it through the winter. But what we're going to do is we're going to show, for comparison, next year, or this coming year, we're going to show how the cutting does compared to the stump that we cut, which should grow some ears right out the side here. So first we're going to get a shovel. And like I said, you can plant them six inches in the ground or you can plant them five feet in the ground. They just all seem to keep growing. What's going to happen here? I think we're just going to lean it right over this one. The two, the, the, they'll be growing side by side. Kick the dirt in. Around it. Tuck it in a little bit, and I'll touch it. I'll touch it up a little later. Uh, but this is all going to keep on growing. Now, uh, pretend I wanted to trim this piece. This is Miguel's yellow with a red center. It's kind of a neat one. Uh, if this had been growing in the ground, it would have all kinds of latex flowing through it. We're about to find out after you've stored it in a dark garage all winter, just how much latex is in it now. Oh, that's what we did. And uh, so I guess our University of Hawaii professor would say, let that milky stuff, I got it's there. Let that milky stuff uh, dry for a month, make a crust on the end, and then plant it anywhere you want. But you know what? Today, we're going to do his alternative route that works for us lazy guys. I'm going to stick in the ground. Uh... What about right here? That's perfect. And I may touch it up a little bit later too. But the point is I want to show you how kind of easy and foolproof these little buddies of ours are. And this was a flat cutting a year ago. And you see the roots that it grew. Now, I think we need to do something for Lisa. So what is that? <laughs> well... She fell in love with a particular plumeria I told you about. And it's called candy stripe. It wasn't this big when we planted it the other year. But uh, Lisa, what do you think about right here? Yeah. Is roughly okay? Yes. That's about where we're That will like. work. Okay. All right. Well, let's see what we can do. We got a lot of worms in there. So uh, let's do the quick and dirty here. I think that's it.
And I promise we'll touch that up also later. As Dick mentioned earlier about the plumeria of fertilizer, you always have a high no number, high phosphorus number to encourage blooms. You start fertilizing your plumeria when you actually see buds on the uh, plant itself, as in this picture. And you stop fertilizing 30 to 45 days before winter season starts. Time of blooms, uh, they're all, they are all different. First blooms you will see are in April. Some plumeria don't bloom some years, however, most do once they mature. Some plumeria bloom for longer, long periods or multiple bloom periods. And as I said before, they do bloom clear into mid-November in a nice year. Uh, these are a couple photos of the cocoa crater on Oahu in Hawaii. Uh, it's an amazing uh, place. Uh, it's got the gardens of the plumeria trees in the center uh, of the crater. If you, for those young and tough, they can crawl up to the top lip of the crater and on a clear day, see the big island, Hawaii. But uh, they have the plumeria in all kinds of colors and whatnot. If you want to plant a plumeria from a cutting, you can cut them off anywhere. Let them grow a crust on the cut tip for a month. Or like Dick mentioned in the video earlier, you can just cut the piece and plant it. Be sure to mark your cuttings. If the plant has, if it has an identified name, for instance, um, we have one that we cut and it's named Big Wave Dave. Be sure to write the name on the lower part of the cutting to identify the source. And that was asexual propagation where the, the, the plant that comes out is gonna be exactly the same as the parent plant. Regarding sexual propagation, uh, you're gonna see that they come from seeds. The picture on the right, or on the left rather, is a seed pod. It's a very hard seed pod and it eventually is going to split, drop the seeds on the ground. You're gonna later see what we did to salvage those seeds um, in, when we had it planted in the front yard. The second picture is a picture of a seed pod that's split open. You can see the few seeds remaining there. And the picture on the right uh, is another picture of that seed pot. Now we will get into the different diseases and fungus that plumeria are susceptible to. Plumeria are susceptible to rust fungus, root rot, powdery mildew, and sooty mold. first one, the Plumeria rust fungus was first discovered in 1902 in the West Indies by some botanists. And this fungus quickly spread to all the tropical warm areas that have Plumeria. The only leaves are infected, not the flowers or the stems. The spores are airborne. So they can spread from plant to plant or by backsplash from rain or if you uh, backsplash from watering the plant. The spores love to land on moist leaves and grow. The way to, to tell if it's rust fungus, there are usually yellow specks or spots that will appear on the top of the leaves. The underside of the leaves will have a very pronounced powdery orange lesion underneath. If left unattended, rust fungus can defoliate the whole tree after a couple of months. Except for overwatering, rust fungus is the most common plumeria problem, but it does not kill the plant.
the rust fungus is that and overwatering are going to be the two most common kinds of problems that you have. It the 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 fungus is controlled by proper sanitation. Um, some varieties are more susceptible than others. Uh, fungicides are used. Any leaf that you see this yellow foamy fungus on the bottom of your leaves, um, you want to cut the leaves off with the scissors, put them in a bag and dispose of them without letting them touch anything else around. Sometimes uh, the problem can be exacerbated by having your plants too close together where they can't breathe. Airflow is important around the plants. Um, the fungicides can be sprayed on the plant and the soil that surrounds them. There are a couple of species that are resistant to, but they're not important to us. As to, as to root rot, powdery mildew and sooty mold, the root rot is important. Powdery mildew and sooty mold, like all of us and all our other plants, is a problem. You, you treat them the same way you would uh, for that, but we've never seen powdery mildew or sooty mold. The root rot is very exasperating. Uh, when you have one of your favorite plants and it starts getting soft, take a look at the bottom left picture. Uh, that was once a nice solid stalk and it's starting to get soft and disappear on you. Well, what you would do is you take those scissors or whatever and cut into the very first good stuff where you see the white milky latex sap come out. And again, if you followed the book, you would let it sit for 30 days to grow the crust. On the other hand, our professor from University of Hawaii did it, had it for 40 years. He, he said, yep, it works just as well. If you don't leave the crust, just cut it, put it in the dirt. I'm not going to take a lot of time on powdery mildew because it's the same kind of problem we have with an awful lot of our plants and you treat it the same. A broad spectrum uh, fungicide and whatnot, uh, but I have not seen that or detected that with regard to our plumeria. Sooty molds, same thing. It's a very common problem in our gardens. Um, just wash the leaves with a mild soap and water solution. It comes from the secretions from aphids, thrips, white flies, and um, it hasn't been a problem on uh, the plumeria. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the plumeria patch. Dick has one more thing he needs to show you. Well, uh, we have a special event here. These seed pods are not that easy to get. They don't happen that often. But this is the seed pod too. A plumeria and it's very hard and it will eventually split open. It'll drop all the seeds on the ground. So we got a nylon from the dollar store. We're going to cut it off. We're going to cut it off and um, Lisa would be handier at this than I am. We're going to try to put this nylon onto the seed pod. And I'm making them look bad, but uh, Lisa, if you want to help me here, I'm all thumbs. Oh, look at that. Well, anyway, so now we'll have seeds from this particular plumeria is uh, named after a, a war hero of mine in Afghanistan. And uh, Jonathan Muse uh, will be uh, having lots of seeds for everybody here probably pretty soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you. And here's a picture of me with one of my favorites of many. <laughs> and this plumeria is called the Texas Beauty. And this picture is Lisa beside uh, probably one of the most famous of our plumerians, and it's called Penang Peach. Penang Peach 
was a rescue plant from one of our most illustrious members of our master gardeners, uh, salvaged it from a friend who became too elderly to take care of it. And the Penang peach will smell just like a peach dribbling down your chin on an August day. It's a beautiful yellow, white, pink, um, pastel flower that blooms. It's probably the best blooming plant we have, and it's about to begin uh, here in the first days of May. Here are some references about um, information that we found in the slide and uh, in the presentation. We want to thank you.